Math class. Welcome back to a new lesson and a whole new unit. As you can see from the bottom, this is unit three, uh, lesson one, exploring side angle relationships. Uh, lesson th or unit three and four are going to be together. Uh, so there's no test after unit three, but uh, after unit four there will be. They're all in the same booklet. There's a total of eight lessons. The first four lessons are in unit three. The, uh, the second four are in unit four. Uh, but they all kind of tie in together. Again, we're looking at doing about two lessons a week um, and writing one quiz at the end of each week. So what we're going to really do today is we are going to solve a problem using our old methods or the methods that we just reviewed um, from grade 10 math where we used Sokotoa sine, cos, and tan. We're going to solve a problem that way and we're going to show uh, how difficult it can be to actually do that uh, when we don't have the right circumstances. And then we're going to show a way where we can more easily do that uh, problem using the newer formula, uh, and we're going to use that in future lessons. So let's start talking about Daniel. So Daniel uh, is about to take a shot at the lacrosse net. He estimates his current position as shown here. How can you use these estimates to determine the width of the net? So what I see overall is that we don't have a right angle. So we can't right now use sine, cos, and tan. So uh, question A, does Daniel's position form a right angle with the goalposts? No, it does not would be our answer. Let's do this. So A, no, it does not make a right angle. Uh, he makes angles, but not 90 degree angles. We're not sure what they are. Uh, he's estimated his distances there though, so that's handy. Uh, question B. A primary trigonometric ratio cannot be used to determine the width of the net directly. Explain why. So, the reason that we can't use Sokotoa is because we need a right angle. So we need a right angle to be able to use Sokotoa. So again, sine, cos, and tan. Uh, we need to be able to have a right angle to use that to find unknown angles uh, and sides. So that's why we can't do that in this situation. C is copy the triangle that includes Daniel's position uh, in the diagram above. So we're going to draw that triangle here, and we're going to add a line segment so that we can determine the height of the triangle um, using Sokotoa. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw this first. So Daniel is right here, and there's a goal post. We'll say it's right there. The goal is straight along that line. Another goal post we have our triangle. We're going to draw our angles and our distances. We got six feet here, five feet here, and Daniel estimates that the angle between the two goalposts is 65 degrees. If it's in that little loop, I can't fit the little degrees, but we know that that's 65 degrees. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we are going to draw a line that um, represents the height of the triangle. So I'm gonna draw it from this side here. That is the height. I'm going to call this x and this y because we've split this line over here. Um, so we've copied the triangle and we've drawn a line that lets us uh, calculate the height. One more thing I want to put in is that this is the goal. Okay. Now what we're going to do is d. We're going to determine the height of the triangle using a primary trigonometric ratio. So if we're using this angle that we're interested in here, uh, we have that angle. This would be opposite, and this would be the hypotenuse. So we are going to be looking at sine. Sine is opposite and hypotenuse. It's the only one with both opposite and hypotenuse. So sine, 65, is equal to opposite I'm going to label as h because that's the height. And I know it's maybe a little bit confusing, but h is what we're looking for. I'm plugging my numbers in right away. So the height over the hypotenuse 
which was six feet. I can rearrange to find out what h is by multiplying both sides by six. So h would be equal to the sine of 65 times six. We do that into our calculator. If you have any questions about how to do that, please let me know. Uh, sometimes you need to have some extra brackets, but what I would do is I would do sine of 65, hit equals, and then multiply by six. That's a personal preference of mine. Uh, the height we found to be 5.44 feet. So that makes sense, right? That's somewhere in the five to six range. It's not like 300, which would make me scratch my head and say, I don't know if that's right. So we found out the height of that triangle. Next, what we wanna do is we want to find out what the width of the net is. Uh, so we wanna find out what the length of the goal is. But what we need to do first is we need to create a plan. So what I think we can do first is we need to use this triangle, the one right here because we only know the one angle. Um, what I can do is I can find x and from the known uh, length of five, I can subtract x to find y. And then I have y and the hypotenuse or height, sorry, h. So I could use Pythagorean's theorem to find the goal. There is multiple ways you can do this, but this is what we are going to do. So e, we are going to create a plan. So our plan is to find x. We are then going to find y. And then we will use Pythagorean's theorem to find the goal. Let's carry out that plan. Carry out your plan to determine the width of the net. Okay, so you have your triangle, I have my triangle, I can see it here. So we're all good, doesn't necessarily need to be on the screen. Uh, so if I'm using the angle of interest 65, I'm trying to find what x is, x is adjacent to it. Uh, so, and I know what the hypotenuse is, the hypotenuse is six, I can use cos. Adjacent and hypotenuse is ka or c-a-h, which is cos. So the cosine of 65 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is what I'm interested in. X, hypotenuse is six feet. I can rearrange to find X. Uh, X is equal to the cos of 65 times six. Again, I would do cos of 65 equals times six. We find X to equal 2.54 feet. And again, that makes sense approximately half of uh, the five feet that that side is. We can find y by subtracting this number from five feet. We know what half of that line is. We can find the other half. So y is equal to five feet minus 2.54 feet, which is equal to 2.46 feet for y. And now we can use this number and the height. Uh, the height we had found to be 5.44. I can use that in the height, Pythagorean's theorem to find the hypotenuse, which would be the length of the goal. Uh, so we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and c is the goal. That's what we're interested in. So we're going to actually square root the sum of these two. So the goal, is equal to the root of a squared plus b squared. And again, this is the height and y right here. So that is equal to the root of 2.46. Doesn't actually matter what order they're in. I think I might have said the height first, but I wrote y first. Doesn't really matter as long as you have them both. 5.44 squared and if we I would do this it equals 5.44 squared equals add them together equals and then square root them we find that the goal is 5.97 feet so we'll say six feet 
the goal is about six feet across. And again, that makes sense. It's not something like two feet, which is very, very small. Six feet would make sense for a backyard net uh, and for a lacrosse net as well. So you can see how many steps it can take to work through a problem to find out what the length of the goal is. Where uh, what I'm going to show you is we can use um, this new formula in triangles that are not right angle triangles um, to uh, make our lives easier. So let's see here. I know this is where it says 3.1 starts, but it was all together. It's all, it's all important. Okay, so we have this triangle here. It is essentially the same as the one that we just uh, discussed and it has the height drawn in. It just looks a little different. It's, it wasn't a right angle triangle before, but now that we've put the height in here, uh, we have split it into a couple of right angle triangles. And we're going to use this uh, to show you how we can um, get this formula. So we're going to do A. We're going to create two expressions that would allow us to determine the height. So um, I'm going to use the angle B. I'm going to use this angle here. I'm going to use sine. So to determine the height, that would be opposite. Height is opposite over hypotenuse, which is C. So I will have the sine of B, right? The sine of angle B is equal to opposite, which is height, over the hypotenuse, which is side C. So that's one expression that has the height. Let's rearrange it for the height. We have height is equal to sine of B times C. Now we just did this in the previous problem. We just don't have let, uh, numbers here yet, but we just did this uh, same sort of thing where we were trying to find the height and we used sine. We can use also this angle here. We can use the angle C where height is the opposite and B is the hypotenuse. So sine of angle C is equal to the height divided by side B. And again, I can rearrange, find out what the height is. H is equal to sine of C multiplied by side B. Okay. Question to B, if we drew the height from a different vertex, so essentially if we drew the height from like here over to this way, or from side, angle C over to this way, what would be the difference? Um, how would the expression for that height be different? Essentially, the expressions would simply involve different sides and angles, but we would end up um, with the same thing. We would have sine of an angle times a side equals the height. So expressions would involve different side angle combinations. And that would be okay. We don't know any of them right now. They're just all letters, so it doesn't matter at the moment. C, uh, what we're going to do is create an, an equation using the expressions we created in part A. So the expressions that we created here. We're going to show how our equation can be written so that each ratio in the equation involves a side and an angle. Um, and we're going to repeat. Uh, so, oh, we don't have another triangle. So we won't repeat. I left that. It's a remnant. It's okay. So C, create an equation from the expressions. So we have these two expressions. And if you remember the transitive property, the transitive property allowed us to equal sine B times C and sine C times B because they both equal the height. And if they equally uh, the height, they must equal each other. So using the transitive property, we would have sine of B times C is equal to the sine of C times B. So we've eliminated the need to draw a straight line down from a corner to find the height. So we've eliminated the height. If we know three of these, we can find it. This isn't the form that we usually see this in or that we use this in. Uh, we rearrange it a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to look at. Uh, I would bring the signs down to the other side by dividing both sides by both of them. 
we would end up with c over the sine of c is equal to v over the sine of v. And imagine that we did the other one at the beginning. We made three um, relationships, or we drew a different angle, a different line to find a different height. Uh, we could also write this a over the sine of a. So it is a really, really useful uh, relationship that we're going to use more and more throughout these lessons. Let's get into a few examples of using it. Okay, uh, so example one, we're going to sketch triangles that correspond to each equation below. So the important thing to remember with this right here was that we made it so that we have corresponding angles and sides. So a side C is always across from angle C. So if I'm given an equation where both of these are numbers, I can plug them in to um, an angle and a side that are across from one another and the same throughout. Uh, I'll show you what we mean here. So we're given W is equal to eight, W over the sine of 50 is equal to 8.0 over the sine of 60. I know that this side and this angle must be across from one another, and then this side and this angle must also be across from one another. So I'm going just to draw a generic triangle. Doesn't really matter what it looks like. Let's draw. So we've got W. I'm just going to label that the side W. Doesn't matter. There's no distinguishing features. That's just where I decided to start. And the angle across from it is 50. I'll draw my next triangle a little bigger, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we also have side 8. So that would be the length of this side. It's not a variable, it's an actual number. And this angle across from it is 60. So I was able to uh, draw my triangle uh, from the equation given. And you can imagine if you're given this triangle, you can then write the equation. Uh, if you know the sides and the angles that are across from one another, you can figure it out. So we can do the other one as well. Let's draw this triangle a little bit bigger. Yes, wonderful. We have 6 over the sine of m and 10 over the sine of 72. So let's just start with labeling that 6. Uh, we also have, That is across from the angle m. It's an unknown angle. We're going to label that M. And then we're going to have 10 here across from the sine of 72. 72 right there. So we've taken our equation that's in your booklet. That's C to the, it was to the right of this previous question. I apologize if I didn't make that clear. This triangle is for C and D is, is for A. Um, but we have been able to use the equation to find out what the triangle's dimensions, some of them would be anyway. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to solve for the unknown sides in each of these problems. So let's do W first. Um, w over the sine of 50 is equal to 8.0 over the sine of 60. I need to get W all by itself, so I'll multiply both sides by the sine of 50 we get W is equal to 8.0 times the sine of 50 divided by the sine of 60. What I would do, maybe I'll show you here. What I would do is I would do sine of 50 equals. So sine of 50, and I'm gonna close my bracket, equals multiplied by eight equals and I'm going to divide it by the sine of 60. So I'm going to divide it, and I'm going to put a bracket just to make sure that it's all separate. The sine of 60. And I'm going to close both brackets because I have two sets of brackets, one right here and one right here. So I need to close both of them. Hit equals, 
7.07, so 7.1 would be W. 7.1, we are not given any units. So uh, yeah, we have 7.1 as our answer for W. And it makes sense in this triangle. Um, it's not crazy off from eight, not super different. Okay, we're going to solve the next one. So the next one is a little bit more complicated. We have 6.0 divided by the sine of m is equal to 10.0 divided by the sine of 72. I need to get sine of m all by itself. So I am going to need to move it up to here to get it to the top. And in doing that, I need to move the 10 down to the bottom on the other side and the sine of 72 up here. In short, what I get is, let's see, I get the sine m is equal to 6.0 times the sine of 72 divided by 10. And then of course, I'm going to do the sine inverse to find out what the angle m is. So sine m is equal to, let's find out what this number is first. It's going to be a decimal. Um, that is what we want when we're doing a sine inverse for now. So let's see. Let's do the sine of 72, close my bracket, equals multiplied by 6 equals divided by 10 equals. Okay, I get a decimal of 0.571. That is great. 0.571. And I rounded the 06 to 0.1. Now I can do the sine inverse of that number. So uh, m is going to be equal to the sine inverse of 0.571. So sine inverse is the second function for sine. So second function sine, see how it's got the little minus one? I mean, it's an inverse. So we have 0.571 and we're going to close our bracket equals 34, we're going to call it 35 degrees. So m is equal to 35 degrees. Okay. If you have questions about that, how I did that in my calculator, how to do that in your calculator, please let me know. Uh, I am happy to help. I've learned I am a calculator expert. So um, we have one last question. And we'll just talk about it. Uh, you can write agree or disagree and a little reason why there, but I'm not going to write anything. Um, Michael claims that if X and Y are sides in an acute triangle, uh, then we have this equation given. X times the sine of Y is equal to Y, my mouse is over it, times the sine of X. Do we agree or do we disagree? So this looks a lot like our initial equation that we put together. Let's go back here. Looks a lot like this one right here, right? Um, this would be x times the sine of y, and then we have y times the sine of x. Looks a lot like this. We've rearranged it into a form that is easier now for us to remember with side and angle together. But I would agree that that's the same. It's just using different variables. And different variables to us uh, are okay to use. They're just different symbols. Uh, I believe, yes, now it's practice question time. Check out the key ideas and the need to know. And again, if you have any questions um, as you're working through the booklet, um, please let me know and I'll see you again soon.